All right, that should be the final version of the leaning steering mod for the Ski Ride 2. Let's take a look at it while I have it apart. Take a look at the components and how to install this on the Ski Ride 2. There are five 3D printed parts needed for this mod. The shock mount dovetail, need two of them. Need a right and a left shock mount and the servo mount. Taking a look at the servo mount, cool thing is it doubles as a frame brace the way I designed it. These holes for mounting the servo are sized for a self-tapping 3mm socketed cap screw. The holes on the side are counterboard with a clearance hole for a 3mm socketed cap screw so they sit flush. That gives me more room in the middle for the servo arm, the length of the servo arm to clear these screws. Taking a look at the shock mount, has a female dovetail designed into it, and the difference between the left and the right is this counterbore. It's on the side so you can access it from the front of the sled, and it's also counterboard to sit flush on the shock mount so that it clears the side of the, the covers when it's moving up and down. This side is sized for self-tapping for a three millimeter socketed cap screw. This hole is sized for self-tapping three millimeter ball link screws in there. Take a quick look at the male dovetail. This hole pattern is the same hole pattern as the build it better shock mount. So that mounts onto the side of the frame on the outside. These holes are sized for three millimeter socketed cap screws to self tap. Here is the servo mount in the frame. Show you the orientation with an earlier version of the design. So it is oriented in the frame like that. The servo mount is held in place with four three millimeter socket head cap screws here, 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 and here. They go through the frame and are self tapping into the dovetails. And I've sized the counterbore in the servo mount, the depth of the counterbore, so a 10 millimeter long socket head cap screw will fully engage in the threads, self-tapping threads into the dovetail, but not stick out past the dovetail and cause the shock mount to bind. The measurement between the ball links on the servo arm I'm using is 30 millimeters. And that distance between the ball links, in other words, the length of that servo arm, gives me a straight alignment on the links to the shock mount, which doesn't cause any binding as it moves up and down. They push in at an angle with a shorter servo arm. I've found that they tend to bind. Something to note on the printing of these dovetails as far as the sizing goes. I had them both oriented on the build plate so I wasn't printing the dovetail as an overhang. So this side was facing the build plate on the shock mount and this side was facing the build plate on the dovetail. But so printing this with supports, note the finish Printing on the supports down in the bottom of the dovetail and on these two surfaces. So I flash them with a torch, kind of rub them with my finger, 
to get a fit that don't bind, you also may have to go in here with a jeweler's file or a sanding block on these two surfaces to get a free running fit. The way my printer's calibrated, all I did was flash this with a torch down in the bottom and on these two surfaces and I got a nice slip fit. It's got to do with how much flow, your nozzle flow, how it's calibrated. I've noticed the size will change a little bit if you're flowing more or less. The last thing to note before I finish assembling this is the length of these links. They are 28 millimeters center to center. And I made these links with the two ends and a short piece of threaded rod in between them. That length of the links, when the servo arm is centered, puts the eyes of the shock mounts at the same height as the eyes of the original shock mounts. These ones will move up and down when it calls it to lean, but in the neutral position, same height. Here it is completely assembled for shock mounts. I use three millimeter socketed cap screws and they're 14 millimeters long. Use three millimeter socketed cap screws for mounting the servo and they're 10 millimeters long. Here's the difference between the right and the left shock mount. The counterbore is positioned on the front of the shock mounts for easier access to that screw. These shock mounts are actually slightly downsized, a bit more streamlined than the originals. Still that to try to ensure I had clearance when they move up and down but I did have to trim a little bit on both side panels here. It's where they go up. It's where the clearance issue is. And this front nose piece on both sides, I had to trim a little bit. Here it is in action. And what is going on here, it leans that much and then this upper suspension arm actually binds against the steering rack. It won't go down any farther. You'll see it when it hits the end of the downward travel. When I turn to the right, then you'll see this shock mount continue to compress the shock. See how the lean stops and then it continues to, both sides, continues to compress the shock. So even though I would like it to lean more, what happens is, the pressure is coming off of this side, so it can fall into the turn. This side has more pressure, even though this arm only went down that far and caused it to lean this much. It's got more pressure on this shock, keeping it from tipping to the outside turn. The other thing that I think is going to help this leaning steering modification is any weight that is up high in the sled and especially this driver figure since it leans it's going to tip that weight to the inside of the turn so now i would like to believe weight that's higher up in the sled is actually going to help in the turn there's another component i have to share that goes along with this leaning steering modification and that is wider arms. These are Build It Better's plus 20 millimeter arms. I already had them on the sled. So I've modified them to plus 30. And here's my thinking. I would rather have a wider stance and better handling than scale. Scale means nothing to me if the performance is suffering. I also have my plus 14 millimeter wide skis and they're inch and a half longer, all in the name of better handling. Many times on scale models, there's liberty taken with some of the features to get better performance. And I'm all for that. 
There's another component to this longer arm, and that's this, the moment arm it's called. So I only can get so much travel with this modification of these shock mounts moving up and down. So if I have a longer moment arm, so here's the pivot point that's being pushed from here, then this is going to push the ski down a greater distance if that arm's longer. Just a slight advantage to that along with the wider stance. I don't mind the look of this sled with the wide arms and the bigger skis. I don't think it looks bad at all, especially with the 165 inch track balance of the sled. Like I said, I would much rather have better handling versus scale looks. A couple more tips for better handling. I have about an eighth inch of toe out. That way, when you make a turn, if you look at this, a little bit of toe out, this ski isn't turned in and causing it to oversteer, which would also cause it to tip easier. Oversteer would be it's biting harder into the turn. So you can see that's angled out. And the last thing that I have found to cause it to handle better is I've tightened up this limiter strap quite a bit. With that not being as tight, more of the weight is riding right in here. So if you look at this triangle, right, you got the width of the arms, but then the length of it, that would not be as stable as if the weight is riding on the two skis and more on the back of the um, track. That's a bigger triangle, which would be a more stable triangle. As an aside, if you're wondering what all these 3D printed parts are, these were the stages of the design development that it took me to land on this final design. Here's my 2024 free ride, and I've taken a little different approach trying to work out the issue of it tipping over so easy. I've modified Build It Better's plus 20 millimeter wide arms to plus 30, the front suspension arms. So let's see how this does in comparison. It's not great at all. That is so not fun. I mean, it'll turn slow like this, and that's what you see everybody doing. They're turning these around slow, so they're just a straight line machine is what it seems like. And there you go again. I mean, they run great on a straight line, but that's crap flip over that easy on a flat driveway and it's worse than a deep powder Get out there in them ruts from my tractor where I plow the driveway. This thing will flip over, just creeping along. It'll turn off on a bank like that. But. I wanted to turn tighter like this on the flat. That's how you see everybody turn. Run it like that straight. Make these slow little turns. So we got some more work to do.
do a quick test out here on the steering it's cold three degrees I have to wait till later time to take it out in the powder that is maybe a foot deep of just soft powder this thing will just bury in it we can't even run on it we need it to warm up and settle a little bit actually drift a little bit with it now It's not leaning a lot, but it's putting pressure on that outside shock, keeping it from just tipping. It just tipped so easy before. Just fall over. Not fun at all to drive. And this is with a driver figure on, so there's definitely a difference in the handling. 